Hey there, it's Megan here, and I'm gonna do a little video about, well, video slash live class, um, about stitch length, stitch width, um, and if you didn't know, we have these live classes every single Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern. I usually do them right from our sewing studio here in Hoboken, New Jersey. We're MA Redesign Sewing Studio, and we teach people of all ages how to sew in real life almost every day of the week. Um, either here in our studio or we do a lot of mobile classes at different schools in the area. Um, so yeah, we do adult classes, kids classes, and one of the things that I've really been wanting to do is more videos. So I'm going live once a week at 4 p.m. on Thursday Eastern Time. You can watch it live on Facebook and you can also sign up to watch it live through the application Zoom. Um, if you're not into Facebook and you can find all that from our website maverdesigns.com slash video classes and This week's class is like I said stitch length and stitch width so I'm going to do my best to show you some techniques and kind of more it's like showing you what the controls do on the sewing machine I do want to say that, um, you know, obviously all sewing machines are a little different. We're looking at this one today. Um, but for the most part, you know, we're going to be talking about the stitch length function and the stitch width function on this machine. It's right located right here. Um, so, you know, if you're if it's not looking like this on your sewing machine, that's okay. I still think that you can get a lot out of this and then apply it to your sewing machine. I mean, even if you have one of these like older models, you know, maybe it's just with a dial or, you know, some sort of lever, but you can look it up in the manual. How do I change the stitch width? With how do I st change the stitch length? And then you can kind of utilize the principles that we are working on now. So let's get into it. I have the machine here. I'm going to uh, work on getting that a little bit closer so you can see what's happening. You'll see I did, I've done a little bit of stitching uh, already. And what I'm gonna do to start is I'm actually just gonna turn the machine off and on because I just wanna start with the default. It defaults to stitch one and it defaults to a stitch length of 2.5 millimeters and a stitch width of zero, zero because stitch one is a straight stitch, okay? So if I place that on the sewing machine like this, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I'll just show you, you know, it's sort of an average stitch length. Basically, if you aren't going to follow any patterns, most patterns would tell you that this would be the stitch length that you'd want to use. Um, it's pretty strong and, but yet yeah, not ridiculously strong. So if you had to like take it out because you made a mistake, you wouldn't spend a year taking the stitches out. So that's 2.5 on the stitch length. Now, if you switch this number to the biggest stitch length on this sewing machine, um, you will see like immediately, it's gonna like push through a lot faster because it's taking giant um, spaces in between each stitch and then you can swing it around and look at it and oops you'll see that the the distance between each stitch is a lot bigger and this is a basting stitch this is basically used if you want to have a stitch that is temporary something that you're not you know, relying on it to, to really hold anything too strong. Say you want to just sew something together temporarily, maybe try it on and then say, oh, this is the perfect fit. You could sew over it. Or some people use a basting stitch 
in place of pinning. They'll just sew it together in a really giant stitch and then um, once they get it to where they want it to be, they'll bring the stitch length down and do it in a regular like 2.5, right? Okay. Now, just to show you the opposite end of this spectrum, we've got really small stitch length. I'll put it at 0.4. I don't want to go too small because then it can get stuck in one place. But if you take a look here, um, you see the machine, the, the needle is just literally like going up and down, up and down, up and down, and it's barely moving. It's almost like I feel like I have to kind of help it along so it doesn't get stuck in one place. But it's doing lots and lots of stitches per inch, and therefore you're getting a really, really, really strong stitch. Um, so something that you might use a smaller stitch length uh, would be like something that you want to be really, really strong. Like if you're attaching handbag straps to a bag um, and you want that to be really strong, that's a good use for a really small stitch length, okay? Now, moving along to stitch width, you'll see it's defaulted to zero, zero because we're on a straight stitch. But if I bring the needle up and I switch the stitch to like stitch seven, which is a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine, I'm going to lower the presser foot. And you'll see here, it defaults to just a, an average size zigzag. Basically the zigzag that is the same size as what's shown here. 1.4 stitch length and a 3.5 stitch width. So I will kind of show you what that looks like. It's going back and forth. And then if we stop and look at that, it's kind of an av like, like I said, an average size zigzag close to what the machine shows. Now, if I bring the um, stitch width up as far as I can go, and on here it's 7.0, and I start, maybe I'll sew in this direction. You're gonna see that the needle is going really far back to the left and to the right. So the stitch width is as wide as it can go, and that is what that looks like. So you can see in comparison to the average default size to like the really, really wide size. Now I want to show you, um, oops, I keep doing it exactly the opposite of what I want. Um, if I show you bringing, keeping the stitch width where it is and bringing this down to a really short stitch, maybe even shorter, let's see. You can see it's barely moving. And then if you stop and look at it, the um, stitch is almost like the solid, the solid ribbon of stitching. And that's what you would call a satin stitch because it kind of looks like satin ribbon and you would use that uh, around an applique. All right, so that's stitch width. Now, um, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. You can kind of play around with combinations of both of these things. So here, maybe I'll bring it down to like a really narrow and then, oops, don't want that, a really kind of bigger, well, average size, let's say. Let's go back to like 1.6. And it's kind of, um, like barely, it's barely going a little bit more, but it's this really narrow zigzag right here. You can kind of see. If I bring it in, you can see, yes. So that's sort of what all these adjustments will do on your sewing machine. So stitch width is usually the number that's that's kind of next to the 
you know, things that look like a stitch in a row. And then the stitch width, um, sorry, that was stitch length. And the stitch width is showing you kind of with this little, um, can you see, diagram that shows back and forth. Looks like a zigzag, basically. So those are them. That is um, stitch length and stitch width. In a nutshell, sorry, you're like super close right now. Let me bring that up. Um, I hope that helped to explain a bit more about stitch length and stitch width. It's a basic concept, but I feel like it's something that a lot of people, you know, don't really fully understand. So that's why I wanted to spend some time talking about it. If you have any questions, I'm so happy to answer. Um, if you want to, you can ask them in the questions. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can ask it in the comments, or you can always email me. I am at customer service at maveredesigns.com. I answer all the emails over there. So um, definitely, if you've got a question, have an answer. And if you like these videos, share them with someone. Um, spread the word. I'd be very happy. Thanks for coming. And I'll see you next Thursday at 4 p.m. Eastern for our next live weekly sewing class. See you then.